Zoos play a crucial role in conserving hundreds of species and protecting them from extinction. I'm Hunter Hauk, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about why zoos are so important. So today we're going to be going over everything from the fact that zoos play an important role in conservation, species survival plans, education, and research. What's this? Oh, it's me popping in uninvited while I'm editing this. Um, if it keeps... my phone keeps going off. Anyways, if it keeps looking like I'm looking, like, right to the side of the camera, that side, whatever side of the camera, it's because I'm looking at my notes and it kept bugging me while I was editing this, but I wanted to make sure I got all the facts right, so I wrote notes. So sorry, we'll be back to unscripted and unnoted in the next video. Now I just want to give a little disclaimer. I personally only support zoos accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, aka the AZA. Private for-profit zoos have horrible care, so it's important to support these non-profit AZA accredited zoos. AZA zoos are essential to protecting endangered species that are in need of support in the wild. So first, we're going to talk about the role that zoos play in conservation. Zoos and aquariums do play a vital role in the conservation of endangered species. AZA zoos focus on keeping animals wild while maintaining genetic diversity in their breeding programs. So I'm going to talk about, like real quick, I'm going to talk about some species that zoos have actually saved from extinction. So first, the Arabian Oryx. They were hunted to extinction in the wild, but they were saved by zoos, and now there's a nice, steady population with genetic diversity. The Bellinger River Snapping Turtle. In 2015, a disease in their natural habitat wiped out 90% of the population, but in 2017, ugh, some hatchlings survived, and now a breeding program for them is underway. And I'm going to dive more specifically into a very successful program that zoos played a crucial role in, the California condor. So they are the largest bird in North America, and the, the cause of the decline of California condors was lead poisoning and habitat loss. In 1987, there were only 27 left in the wild. So all of them were caught and put into the California condor recovery program. In 1992, they were able to release some California condors into the wild, and now the species has about 500 birds instead of 27. So that just shows that these breeding programs that zoos and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service can collaborate on can work super well and save a species from extinction. Well, the battery's about to die on the camera, so I'm going to charge it, and I'll be right back. We're going to talk about AZA species survival plans. So according to the AZA website, species survival plans oversee the population management of select species within the AZA member institutions and enhance conservation of this species in the wild. So basically what that means is that they maximize genetic diversity, manage distribution amongst facilities, and ensure long-term sustainability of species. So they're making sure that they aren't inbreeding any animals. They're making sure that they have genetic diversity so that if it is an animal that's endangered, when they put it back out in the wild eventually, it'll be able to thrive. They manage distribution amongst facilities, so they're not going to have everything for one breeding program in, say, the Oregon Zoo. They're going to spread it out to all sorts of zoos so that more people can learn about them and see about them and then start to care about their conservation. And then they ensure long-term sustainability of the species. So they make sure they make sure that they're breeding for what they would see in the wild, not what they want to see in the zoos. So and they also make sure to breed the healthier animals. So that way they can have genetic diversity and animals that are going to live long, happy, healthy lives in the wild like they would before the animals almost became extinct due to humans. So just like I sort of did with the California condor, I'm going to be highlighting another species here when we're talking about the species survival plan. So this is Panthera tigris alteca, I believe that's how you pronounce it, or the Amur, Amur tiger, Amur tiger, I think it's Amur tiger. 
I should know this, I've heard a zookeeper talk in depth about them and had a conversation about them. So this is also sometimes known as the Siberian tiger, but that's kind of outdated language, so it's known to most of the people in the zoo system as the Amur tiger. So these tigers are critically endangered. They're listed as critically endangered by the IUCN. So that basically means that the last time there was a big study done on them, it showed that the species without intervention was going to go extinct if humans kept destroying their habitat and hunting them. So the reason I chose these tigers was because I've actually seen some in person at the Oregon Zoo. So at the Oregon Zoo they had a great enclosure for them, it looked very enriching. And I can't remember if they had sisters or if it was a male-female pair. I want to say it was sisters. I don't know. I'll try to find out and I'll put it on the screen right here. But anyways, there were, I want to say two. It's been like a month since I was there, so I don't remember everything. So when doing research for this video, I actually read through their species survival plan. So it's managed by the AZA and there is one person who's in charge of like coordinating it between all the zoos. And I read through that report, the Species Survival Plan, and it said that at the rate that they're at, they will have 90% genetic diversity for the next 100 years. So even if their habitat isn't back to perfect for them to go live in the wild in 100 years, they'll still be able to be reintroduced in 100 years successfully. Now, obviously, that's not the goal. You want to be able to reintroduce them as soon as it's safe. But that's like the worst case scenario. They'll still be good because of this emphasis on genetic diversity. So actually the most current version of the species survival plan that I was able to find publicly was the 2015 version and in that stud book it said that there were 124 tigers and that the goal was 150 tigers in that program so that they would be able to have lots of genetic diversity. How many times have I said that? Comment down below and I'll hurt your comment if you get it right. So they have something called a stud book, which basically is a book that shows the exact lineage of all the tigers from the time that they were brought into the wild, or brought from the wild into the zoo system for conservation. So that way they can make sure they're not breeding to sister or to siblings or cousins or even distantly related tigers. That way they are ensuring that sustenance and sustainability in the wild or for the wild population. I thought one of the interesting thing in the species survival plan was, and I quote, capacity building of Russian veterinarians. So that way if, an, if a tiger in the wild needs help, these veterinarians will be able to help it instead of just having to euthanize it, which will help their numbers extremely. So it's not just them breeding them in the wild and putting them out there. They're also doing work to help the wild population that's left and also to help their habitat and the veterinarians there so that they can help so that once they are in the wild and sus have a sustainable population they won't have to keep get being intervened with by humans. Another big part of zoos is education. So there's a lot of like false information about zoo education. So on the PETA Kids website it says, the only thing zoos teach people is that it's okay to keep animals in captivity, bored, cramped, lonely, and very far from home. So I'm going to just kind of explain why that's untrue. So one of the things that they argue is that the elephants shouldn't be in captivity. So one of the elephants that I saw at the Oregon Zoo was actually shot in the head in the wild, so it's completely blind out of one eye. And it is a Borne Borneo, Bornean pygmy elephant, I believe. I'll put it on the screen if that's incorrect. But just off the top of my head, I believe it's a Borneo pygmy elephant. And I can't remember her name, but I'll put it on the screen because there's lots of information about her. So she would have died in the wild, but they were able to rescue her and they spent millions of dollars to bring her here to the Oregon Zoo so that they could help preserve this species. And they also saved her life, because in the wild she wouldn't have been able to survive because she had been shot in the head. So it's kind of a matter of do you want her to be dead or do you want her to be here having a great life at the zoo with lots of space? Their enclosures are huge. And they actually, when I was there, it was kind of a behind the scenes type of thing. 
that I got to do with some other kids from my county, and it was a, a great experience. I would definitely recommend doing one of those if you could ever, or if you can do one. But anyways, we were there overnight, and in the morning we got to see how they do enrichment for these elephants. So it's different every single day, but they, on this particular day, they hid apples around their enclosure, and it was funny. One of them ate like seven apples. They would just go pick it up with their trunk and eat it and then find another one, and that's how they were able to stimulate their minds so that they were making sure that they weren't bored or lonely. They're also with friends, and I can guarantee you they weren't cramped. They can run around in that large enclosure. In many places, people can't even see wild deer in nature, much less see and learn about bontebok, black bears, bald eagles, bobcats, buffleheads, black and white rough lemurs, blue and gold macaws, bull trout, and bats. Yes, that is the list of all the animals that I could find that started with a B on the Oregon Zoo website because we love a little alliteration. But seriously, a lot of people who live in larger um, urban environments can't even look outside and see like a white tail or mule deer or anything. So I think it's important that they are able to go to a high quality AZA accredited zoo and make that connection with the animals to say like, hey, this is cool. My ring light just turned off. I want to preserve this species. In my personal opinion, so in this video I'm trying not to do much opinion stuff, but this is something that really can't be measured in facts, but it is my opinion that nothing, TV, YouTube videos, photos, a documentary or anything can compare to seeing, hearing, and smelling these animals in person. Well, maybe not smelling them kind of gross, but seeing and hearing them and just watching the way that they move and stuff, that is going to help you make a personal connection to these animals to make more people want to help conserve these animals and protect them in the wild. Not only do zoos help individuals make a personal connection with these animals to help want to conserve them, zoos can also help conduct crucial research to conserving species and stopping the collapse of ecosystems as a whole. So we need to know how species live and act and interact in the wild so we can study that in zoos on a smaller scale so that you can help make sure that their habitat in the wild when you are saving it from that, like cleaning up from that habitat destruction, making sure that their natural habitat is perfect so that they can live happy and healthy lives and have those natural social dynamics. You can also learn about reproduction to support it in nature. So maybe for your breeding program you need to know the ester cycle of a, I don't know, grizzly bear. Sure, we'll just say you need to know the ester cycle of a grizzly bear for your breeding program. In the wild it's going to be a lot harder to track so in the zoos you can help see that and research that so that you can help conserve them in the wild. In zoos you can also research what they eat in nature to ensure conservation of their food sources as well. If you put this animal back out there and its food source has also gone extinct, then your whole breeding effort in captivity was for nothing so you need to see what they're eating so that you can make sure that the whole ecosystem is healthy. For example, if an animal ate rabbits in the wild and all the rabbits went extinct, when you put that animal back out there, it wouldn't have any food, so it would go extinct too. So it's important to make sure that not only itself, but its food sources and its habitat and its shelter are preserved. That way they can live happy, healthy lives naturally when you do put them in the wild again. Yay, it's time for our conclusion. So in conclusion, zoos are necessary for the survival of endangered animals and for the ecosystems in which they live. They're also vital to education. The more people know about these animals and have a personal connection with these animals, the more they're going to care about these animals in general and want to help protect their natural habitat. And zoos can also provide research about animals that can help in their natural habitats. Thank you guys so much for watching, I seriously hope you learned a lot. A lot went into this video, I literally spent four hours putting together notes for this video, so it was a labor of love because this is something that's very important to me. So if you guys could like and comment, that would seriously mean the world because that helps me 
or that helps YouTube promote this video to more people, which in turn allows more people to learn about these animals. So it's a cycle, just hit the like button and you'll be helping with that. <laughs> so while we're not in school, I'll be posting a new video every Tuesday and Friday. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that and turn on the notification bell. And also follow me on Instagram at HunterHawkOfficial if you want to see my awesome animals because I post them there whenever I'm not posting here. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye. I forgot to mention, on the shirt that I'm wearing here, I can't remember what the viewer's name was, but one of my viewers was nice enough to send this shirt to me actually a few months ago, but I completely forgot to wear it in a video until today. So I'll leave, I think they have an Etsy shop where they make these, so I'll leave their Etsy shop in the description, and I think I might take Instagram photos in this because I really like this shirt. They also sent me another one, so go check them out. I'll link it in the description.